Hey everybody, how's it going? Glad to talk to you tonight. I've got something interesting to go over with you. I wanna talk about the desert tonight. I wanna to talk about the desert in the Bible, more specifically the wilderness. I'll use the word the wilderness. We first hear about the wilderness because God sends Cain there and we get an idea that the wilderness is a lonely place, a desolate place. It's not like the garden where you're gonna find lush food and water and everything you could dream of there. Next, Moses ends up in the wilderness, the foot of Sinai and the bush calls to him. And he learns that God is, I am. And the point is, when Moses asks what God's name is and he says, I am, the point is God is saying, I'm alive. I'm alive, I'm a living God. Generations have gone by since the flood and there's been a lot of forgetting, but I'm a living God, I'm alive, I'm alive in you, I'm alive in everybody. In fact, then he goes on to take on the pantheon of Egyptian gods that, that aren't alive and destroys each and every one of them and it's this beautiful story and he frees his people from bondage and he parts the Red Sea and gives them this miracle to ponder and they fall away and they end up wandering in the wilderness for 40 years and it sucks to wander in the wilderness because it's dry and desolate and there's no food and there's no water and it's hard to just survive and i think the way we teach this is i don't know i don't know if it's right or not this idea quickly we'd say well uh, they didn't obey god they didn't obey god so Therefore, uh, God made them wander in the wilderness. Is that it though? Pause there for one moment. Uh, Jesus wandered in the wilderness too. Not for 40 years like the Hebrews, but for 40 days, a condensed version. And he was hungry there too. Jesus was and the devil tempted him and he overcame. And then the angels came to him. Let's go back to the desert that the Hebrews were in now. Was it about punishment for not obeying God? Or was it God desperately saying, I am, I'm alive, and I'm in each of you, and I love you. Trust me. I want you to trust me. When you pray to me and ask for your daily bread, I'll give it to you. And then you go, that's weird. I prayed for this thing and it happened and you'll learn to trust God more and you'll pray again and it won't be about money it'll be about bread it'll be about a defective character it'll be how to do something right with your child sometimes you'll get the smarts to go ah I'm not going to pray for God to give me the strength I'm going to pray for God to relieve me and deal with this for me and he will and more trust is built and don't you wonder how these people say, oh, it's about a personal relationship with God. Do you know how hard it is to have a personal relationship with God? All relationships are built on trust. The desert was about trust. And boy, was it a big one. Wander 40 years in this place that does not possess the things you need. I will provide the things you need. Just trust me. Call upon me. I am. You might not hear me right this second, but I am, I'm here, call upon me. And only when they began to trust the Lord, did he give them the privilege of his law. How beautiful is that? So now they go through the experience of learning to trust God through prayer and they fall away again, just like we all do. We forget that God is a living God and can be trusted and we're supposed to trust God and we're supposed to talk to God and we're supposed to ask God for things and then once God gives us things we're just blown out with gratitude and that's how we worship then worship comes we have a reason to worship why not worship this living God that is real and has a relationship with you and answers your prayers and gives you your daily bread and is with you and is in you and says, all I want you to do is share a piece of me with someone else. 
He doesn't call me. I don't have a special calling. He calls all of us. But it's fascinating that there was the 40 years in the desert that we've taught is about being punished for disobeying God. When in reality, it was God teaching them to trust him. And the moments they broke down and finally begged and were spiritually impoverished and said, God, please help us. We're starving. Okay, I'll help you. Here's some manna. That wasn't too hard, was it? All you had to do was ask. Maybe next time you don't have to be so desperate when you ask. And then in the New Testament, we get the picture of Jesus Christ, the God-man himself doing it in the wilderness. And he succeeds. He withholds the temptation because he knows God will provide. I don't need to live on bread alone. Yeah, I'm thirsty here. Yeah, I'm hungry here. But I know God will come through for me. God came through for Israel. God came through for the Hebrews. God proved himself above all the other pagan gods and idols. So I think the desert in the Bible is a fascinating thing to think about. The wilderness. The wilderness is a fascinating thing to think about. You know, John the Baptist uh, baptized in the Jordan River, out, and it talks about him being out in the wilderness too, right? Baptizing in the flesh. There's something about the story, the narrative of Scripture, the supernatural story of the redemption of man that involves us being in the wilderness and learning how to trust God and building a personal relationship with God by building that trust and learning to trust. And the more we learn how to trust, the more faith we're blessed with. And once we develop faith and we come to learn who Jesus Christ is and we're born again, then we're given the grace, right? which is the forgiveness to go along with all the wrongdoing. We've offended this perfect God who wanted nothing more than to love us and have a personal relationship with us. I think there are years worth of sermons about the wilderness in scripture, but I don't think it's about being punished for disobeying God. I think it's about God guiding the individuals to teach them how to trust him because he's alive i am that's what it means when i go to pharaoh and say let my people go who shall i say sent me i am sent you the living god as compared to all the other not living gods do you see we create all the other gods in our lives there's only one living god anyway i've gone on long enough but this might be something interesting to consider uh, for your sermon work. I wouldn't presume to tell you what to preach. I am not in that. But it might be worth thinking about. Uh, God bless you. Talk to you all soon. Bye-bye.